Hey, welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy, and today I'm going to be taking a look at The Voyages of Marco Polo. This is put out by Z-Man Games, plays in about an hour and a half for two to four players. And the basic premise is you get to play one of the guys that is accompanying Marco Polo on his travels. And so you're going to be going all over trying to buy goods, trying to open up new markets across the land, and so you get to decide which way you're going to go across the board and how you're going to do it based off the contracts that you have. So let's take a look and see what you get in the box. Okay, so this is what you get in the box with Marco Polo. As you can see, there is a ton of stuff that you get. You get a huge board, you get a lot of components, a lot of dice, a lot of wooden tokens, a lot of cards, a lot of player aids that come with the game as far as the instructions and the actual player aids that you get, player boards. Let's take a closer look so you can see what these pieces look like. First thing is they have these really cool um, meeples that go with each kind of commodity in the game. So you've got camels, you've got a pepper, you've got silk, and you've got gold. And so my only complaint with this particular component is that they have a large size and a small size. The large is worth three, the small is worth one. And so uh, at the beginning of the game, it takes you a little bit to get used to those sizes. But by the end of your first game, you're kind of used to that and you get it. So that's that. Um, you do, each player gets their own set of dice. So these are nice wooden dice and you get meeples to go along with it that represent your workers and your markets that you're gonna open up. So I just really like that. It really makes the game colorful and pop. And uh, if you're one of those people that love to have your particular color, then they probably have it with all the standards. So red, green, yellow, blue. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, there's just tons and tons of pieces in this game. You got these little player, uh, your character card. And so this tells you what your special ability is for this guy. And so this is a really nice, really thick cardboard that they use for that. The contracts that you get during the game are also a really thick cardboard. And so it just makes it feel like it's a quality component. Um, the money that you get in the game is okay. It's just these little tokens that just represent money. They're kind of shaped oddly, but uh, it's unique enough that it's not just a circle punch out and there's your money. So they did something different with that. So this is what your player board is going to look like in Marco Polo. Basically have some slots here where you can put your contracts. You've got slots here that put all your markets that you're going to be getting out. When you roll your dice, you're able to put them here uh, so that you know what dice that you have left and what numbers they are. This is kind of a general area to put all of your supplies. And then any completed uh, contracts that you have kind of go right here. And this is supposed to symbolize like a desk. So this is the desk that you sit at and you put all your completed ones here. I really like the setup of this. It's not just a standard square thing. They made it kind of look cool. So really quickly, let's talk about how Marco Polo plays. Now, there are a lot of rules that go into this game, so I'm not going to give you all the explanations of it, but I want to give you a general idea of what each location on the board does, how you move across the map, how you collect victory points. And then this will give you an idea whether or not this game is going to fit for you and your gaming group. So begin the game, everybody's going to pick a color that they want. This plays two to four people. And so you pick a color that you'd like, and then you get the dice and the markets that are associated with that, and the little meeple guy. And so this guy's gonna be on the board, and uh, you're gonna use one there, and then one to move as points that go around the board, kind of like Ticket to Ride or Kingsburg. And so once you get that, you're also gonna get a blue starting contract. And so they give you some specific ones that are made just to start the game. You're gonna get two camels. And then based off of the turn order, you're gonna get either seven on up money, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 uh, money to start the game. And they even give you designated to begin with, at least they give you designated character cards. So they tell you if you're the first player, you get this guy, second player, get that guy, third and fourth and so on. But there are a number of characters that are in the game. And so you can uh, eventually get to where you just choose your own. But to start the game, at least they give you that startup. Now, we'll say this about the character cards. When you first play the game, you're going to feel like they are extremely overpowered. Like there's one dude, the, the first player guy that doesn't have to roll his dice, so he gets to play his dice on the board in any way that he wants and that seems totally unfair right but as you play the game you'll figure out that uh, you get to do it however you want and the characters their powers eventually end up matching each other by the end of the game you'll believe me i promise so that's all you need to start the game each person gets that and then you begin and so what you're going to do is you're going to be taking turns 
going around the board and utilizing spaces that are on the board. And so let's quickly go over some of those. So the very first space that I'll tell you about is just a free money spot. So basically it doesn't matter what die value you have, you just place a die here and you're going to get five coins. It's that simple. So that's just a free money spot, you can go there. Secondly, you can come to the cons favor. So basically this one is you place a dice here. If you're the first person there, it doesn't matter what you put down. If you're after that person, you have to place a die based off of what the person before you placed. So this person here placed a three. So now if I wanted to go and get the cons favor, I would have to place either a three or a four, five, or six. So basically you match their number or you go higher than their number. And when you go to this location, you're gonna get one resource of your choice and you get uh, two camels, two camels and one resource. So you're either gonna get pepper, silk, or gold. And uh, gold seems to be the hardest commodity in the game to get, so you might be getting gold there. Okay, another place that you can go here is the bazaar. And this one is really cool because it works off of, there's four different levels, and then there are four or six different columns that you can go, four rows and six columns. So on the bottom column, it's just camels. It takes one die, and uh, whichever value is on the top of the die here, so let's say that I had a two, and I place this on the bottom row, I would get two camels for that one. If I place it on the next row here too, I would get two, uh, two pepper for that instead. And so as you go up, the next level requires two dice. And so you can place any two dice that you want there, but you're going to be basing it off of the lower value. So right here I have a two and a five, so I would be getting two silk. Let's say that I had, oh, I don't know, two fours here. Um, I could be getting three silk, but if for some reason I wanted two silk, and a camel, I could get that one instead. So basically you get up to, or you could go back down, which only matters for a few of these when there's a variety right next to it. It would never really make sense if you were on the camel level to get less camels, that doesn't matter. So that's how this one works. So you're able to go that's top level here that is gold. I'd have to put out three dice and then um, I would go with the lower one. So right here I've got four, five, four. So I take a four so I could get three gold. Okay, um, so that's how that one works. Uh, what else can you do on the board? So you can buy new contracts, right? So one thing that you can do is you can take one of your dice and you can place them here and you could buy a contract. So I placed out a four, so I'd be able to get the four contract that's right here. If I had a five or a six, there's a benefit here. Not only could I get the contract, but I also get right here, I would get one money and a camel or here I would get two money and two camels. So it would be to your benefit to maybe take that contract. If you ever take a contract, the rest of them are moved down and so it fills in the spot there until the round is over so there's always going to be there will never be a, an empty space between one of your dice there or the contracts okay what else can you do you can travel so traveling in the game is pretty unique and it's probably the most frustrating at the beginning of the game because you can't get the concept and you want to move but it's expensive to move so how does movement work so it takes two dice so you place the two dice in this location and you're going to be going off of the lower number. So if I had a one and a four here, I would be going off the one. So the most that I could move on this turn would be one movement, but I would have to play, pay three money to get one movement. So let's say that I had a four and a four, then I could come up here to four. I could move up to four, but I would have to pay 12 money to do that. So that's a lot of money that I would have to pay for those 12 spaces. So now you can see why getting money might be a valuable thing for you to do. So once you pay for your money, you place your dice and you pay for your money, then you're able to move on the board. And so each one of these cities and these little markets have places in between them, little oasis. And so that counts as a stopping point on the way there. For, so for me to move from Vene excuse me, for me to move from Venetia to Moscow, it would take me two movement. And so I would have to have on this one, I would have had to have paid gotten at least a two would have been my lowest number and I would have to have paid seven money and then I could go from Venetia to Moscow. Now what happens when you go when you come to Moscow, if you're the first person to make it there, then you're gonna get this reward that's on the top. So for me, I made it to Moscow first, I get one resource of my choice. And so I take that, you can remove that from the board, that way there's no confusion now, and there's spots on the top. So once you make it to a new town, a new market here, I'm able to place one of my little guys here in this town. And now that means that I have a new location that I can place my dice. So there are all of these locations on the board that give you special abilities, but until you have a market in that place, 
you can't use that. And you have to have stopped in that town in order for you to place a market there. So if I had paid four, had four movement and I'd went through here, then I wouldn't be able to place a market there unless I stopped there. So let's take a look at this particular one right here. This says if I place a die here, then I can trade a camel and a silk for eight money. So on any turn, if I want to use this spot now, I'm able to use that because I have a market there. So there's markets throughout and there's rewards throughout. So as you go through, you're able to get some of these. And these smaller little towns, instead of the big ones, they have something that's going to happen on every single turn. So if I hurry up and get to some of these places, then during the game, each round, I'm going to get this added ability. So right here, every single round, if I got to or moves, however you say that. If I got here, I would get five money every single round. So I'm just building an engine at that point. Here, if I did this, I would get three camels. So if I got here and here, every single round, I would get five money and three camels. So now you start to see how your resources start to add up and build up the further you travel and go. A couple places to note on the board is Beijing. The first person to make it to Beijing is going to get 10 victory points. So there's a lot of uh, incentive to get to Beijing. And then they go down from there, 7, 4, and 1. Another great location to note is Sumatra, because if you build one marketplace in Sumatra, you now have access to three new abilities that are in that town. And so that's a great place to make it too. Um, there are some costs for traveling on some roads, like for instance, to go from Moscow to and Anxi, however you say that, I would have to pay not only the cost of movement, but I would also have to pay three extra camels. Here, if I'm gonna go from, it, to go into Beijing here, I would have to pay five money to cross this uh, waterway right there. In essence, you're paying like a toll or you're paying for somebody to take you across there. So the same thing here, if you wanna come into Sumatra, it costs you 10 money to cross that uh, waterway right there. So there are some uh, restrictions there for movement. So that's basically the idea. You're trying to move through the game to open up all these extra abilities, get to these things that can give you extra stuff and you're creating this engine. So you're getting things and trading them in and fulfilling contracts. So another way to score victory points in the game are these contracts that they give you. And these contracts basically give you a small little recipe of what it takes to get the reward. So if I had two camels, a silk, and a pepper, then I would get a new contract for free. That's awesome. I didn't have to pay for it or use a turn to do it. And I would get five victory points. So that's awesome. So then I'd move my marker up on the board here five victory points. Um, so there's also some free actions that you can do. So um, on the back of your little player aid card, this tells you some bonus actions that you can do that don't cost you a turn, don't cost you a die. You can do this before or after a turn if you want. So one of those that you can do is you can take a black die. You can do this once per turn. So basically I trade in two camels and I get an extra black die. I roll it, I place it in my arsenal, and now I can use it. Another thing that you can do is you can pay two camels to adjust a die result by one. So let's say that dude over here had blocked me with a six and I had a five. I could play two camels to bump this up to a six and now I can go there. Another thing that you can hear is you can re-roll a die. So I pay one camel and I get to re-roll one of my die. I didn't like the result. Hey, I got a six. That's what I needed. Good deal. Um, another place on the board is right here where you can take three coins. You place one die onto the money bag and you take three coins regardless of the value that you have on that. Okay. Um, another thing that you can do is you can complete a contract. So if you have all the needed uh, ingredients for this contract, you pay for it and you complete the contract you can do that before or after your turn so basically as it's moving around you say okay before I go let me do this free action do your turn okay I'm done now but let me do my free action and then you the play continues around the board like that so um, let's see here so the, the at the beginning of the game they tell you to take um, all the contracts and divide these up into six piles and so the game plays out over six rounds and so once all the contracts are gone the game is over and then you add up victory points so you get victory points based off of um, when you're going to certain places off of your contracts and you see where you are on the board and you also get victory points on these secret things that they give you at the beginning of the game so these secret things at the beginning you're going to get two of these cards and if you have a marketplace in any of these towns you're going to get a certain amount of money or victory points for that so if you get it in one you get one point two three points three six points and if you make it if you have a town in all or market in all four of these locations then you get 10 extra victory points so that's your benefit and the player that you're going the players that you're going against have no idea where you're trying to go to on the board so that could be some hidden victory points that come up at the end of the game 
So that's basically Marco Polo. And I'm sure somebody's gonna crucify me and tell me that I forgot something. And I'm so sorry if I did. I'm not that rules guy. I don't know everything about it, but that's it. I hope that this gives you an idea so you can figure out if this game is gonna fit for you and your gaming group. So what do I think about this game? I love it. I remember when I first heard about this game, I was so excited because I thought this is exactly what I want in a game, right? Because I like Alien Frontiers, I like Kingsburg, but I wanted a little bit more. So when they told me, and I don't know if I really buy this analogy, but when they told me it was like Alien Frontiers and Ticket to Ride or Kingsburg and Ticket to Ride mixed, like I got so excited because I love both of those games. I thought this could fit for me. This would be perfect. And it's not like Ticket to Ride. <laughs> it's closer to like an Alien Frontiers or a Kingsburg, but I just like it. I like being able to roll my dice and place them out and uh, being able to uh, just come up with my plot of how to go and where to go. Uh, when you first play the game, you're going to kind of be confused. You're going to be like, what should I be doing right now? I don't know exactly what I should be doing. But after you know a couple of rounds in, obviously after your first game, you're going to have a good idea of how you balance getting contracts, how you, how you balance traveling across the board. It's just a lot of fun to me. I just love it. I feel like there's just a lot that you can do and there's so many ways there's replayability and that all of these bonuses that go with the towns can be different all the cards that come out can be different the character that you have can be different the the secret locations you have to go to can be different the contracts that you pick up along the way are going to be different um, there's just a lot that every round is going to be randomized and so it's not going to feel like the same Ticket to Ride, I guess, where it's like, oh, what do you know? I got New York to L.A. again, you know, and I'm going to go and, and make that uh, that ticket there. So it's a little bit different in that. Um, it's different than Alien Frontier, something I didn't mention, too, in that in a lot of those games, when a space is taken, it's taken and you can't go there. On this game, you actually can go in a place that somebody else has already gone. You just have to pay for it. So if I, let's say that I wanted to come to this space down here where somebody had already done the camels, and I want to go there too, I can go on top of that dude, but I have to pay money to do it. So I placed a five on top of his. I have to pay five money now to get my five camels. And so um, just because a space is taken doesn't mean that you can't go there anymore. You just have to pay to do it. So I really, really like that concept. So... Okay, so at the end of our reviews, we do a one die rating. Should you buy it, play it, or hate it? And you can probably tell already what I'm gonna do, but I'll tell you the rating system anyways. Green means go buy this game and add it to your collection. White means maybe you wouldn't buy it, but you definitely play it. And then red means you wouldn't buy it and you wouldn't play it because you hate it. This one gets a green, what do you know? Because this is me, totally, I just love it. If you're into this kind of game at all, I just think you ought to go buy it and add it to your collection. I think the artwork is great. I think the pieces components are awesome the gameplay is really cool i like the secret or the uh the uneven abilities that each one of these characters have and so it makes me want to play it over and over and try with a different guy and see how that works i just really like this game so go check out the voyages of marco polo by z-man games thanks for watching we've got a lot more reviews on our website boardgamecloset.com we're on facebook twitter and instagram thanks a lot thanks for watching